Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Peter, and the angle is getting higher. It's not very easy to speak like that. <laughs> Probably I will have some neck issues after the tutorial, but as long as the angle is high, everything's fine. <laughs> Today I'm going to show you how to motion track dancing people. So the first step is start After Effects. Create a new composition, name it however you want. Make sure that the resolution of the composition is the same resolution as you want to have the export in. After that, go to the project window and import the clip you want to do the motion tracking on. Then drag the clip into the composition window. The next step is to create a null object. Definition of a null object. A null object is actually nothing. It is an invisible layer that has all the properties of a visible layer. If you haven't put any data on it, it will have no effect on anything. They are not meant to be seen. They are meant to control things. In our case, we're gonna pass all the tracking data we are about to create later on to the null object. After you created the null object, create a camera. A virtual camera. A virtual camera is often used in a 3D video program to simulate a physical camera. In real life, it takes a lot of industrial steps to build a camera. Most of them are built in China or in Eastern countries. That's because the hourly wages in these countries are unfortunately far below European average. That sucks. Some cameras like a RED camera, which is often used in cinema, are built in the United States. In a 3D program, it just takes two clicks to create a virtual camera. It's even better that you can change the lens of the camera in a 3D program also by just clicking on the preferred focal length. No lens cleaning needed. So you have we clean uh, the sensor. Now you can make sick camera movements through this 3D space. You can just leave the default settings. Press OK. Now to start the motion tracking, select the clip and go to motion tracking. Beside the position you can also click on the rotation and scale box. This is very important especially when the subject is moving in all different directions. After you did that, place the tracking points on two very high contrasty points on the subject. A tracking point. A tracking point is a point which is chosen by you. Actually you can place it wherever you want on the frame, but it makes sense to put the point on the subject it should follow. For example, if you put one tracking point on your eye, it should follow your eye the whole time. The tracking point would really say thank you if you put it on a clean and high contrasty pixel area. What I mean by a clean and high contrasty pixel area is that it works better if there is no motion blur going on and if there is some change in terms of color or luminance in the area. These are informations every tracking point likes and you want to make the tracking point happy. The tracking point has two boxes. You define by the smaller one what pixel combination or in other words what part of the image it should follow. If you place it on the iris you tell him keep tracking the iris. The bigger box gives the tracking point information where it should search for the pixel pattern or in other words where it should search for the iris. If the subject is not really moving, you can keep it small. In our case, the subject is really moving, so you need to tell the tracking point, hey, search in this whole area for the iris. The benefit of keeping the boxes small is that it tracks very quickly because there is not much pixels to go through. If you make the box bigger, the program will need more rendering power because it needs to search through a higher amount of pixels. As soon as you find two very good spots for the tracking points, just click on the play icon and the program starts tracking the selected points. If the tracking is done, check if the program did well by going through the tracking. If the program was missing something, go and make adjustments by positioning it right. As soon as the tracking is finished, you can just go to edit target and select the null object you just created. Then you can click on apply and press ok. Now all the tracking data is saved to the null object. So before, the null object doesn't have any meaning. Now you gave meaning to the life of the null object. The next step is to make each layer a 3D layer. Then parent the camera to the null object. You do that because you want to say the camera, camera, please do exactly the same camera movements as the eye of the subject I just motion tracked. It happens that your clip just jumps around so you see the alpha background behind it. To avoid this, just crop in as far as you need to until there is no visible background anymore. Shoot always in the highest resolution as possible, because sometimes you need to scale in a little bit to avoid these visible backgrounds. 
Also make sure to frame a little bit wider in the shoot, so you can compose it in a nice way later on. Next time the angle is probably even higher, so if you don't want to miss that, I would highly recommend to subscribe to this channel, leave a comment down below how fantastic it was and whatever. I see ya, it's Peter.